Okay. Okay. We're going to go ahead and get started. We'll go ahead and have Matt um, present for the Plank and Platform Council. How's everyone doing this afternoon? Good, thank you. <laughs> um, president has said we have a strict 15 minutes, so I'll try to only do 2025. I said 60. <laughs> Uh, my name is Matt Morgan. I'm with um, MDM Scaffolding and, and the Plank and Platform Council. Um, I know Dean is on. He was our current co-chair, so um, he may be chiming in as well. Uh, what we're going to kind of go over today is we have a couple announcements with the actual Plank and Platform. Um, we're wanting to give some market insights and research on, you know, the wood currently, which a lot of people have been talking about this week. <clears throat> um, and then as well as kind of what our current projects that we've done in the past of what's out on on the website and then we have a new suggestion of a project that um, we actually tried to do last year but we've got some different ideas so um, please feel feel please feel free to interrupt um, any type of interaction would be great to help make this a smoother uh, presentation for me so uh, currently Dean Cook is our co-chair you have myself Brian Hillier uh, Mike Dillerin, J.W. Whitworth, Steve Aikman, Steve Boseman, and we all um, kind of represent the different types of planking and platforms that you guys use today, composite, steel, wood, um, and so forth. So one of our biggest announcements on plank and platform is in the last three years, we are now losing our second chair. Um, Jeff Jack ran the plank and platform for many years and did a great job. And then a couple of years ago, Susan with Mikazi Lumber had stepped up and took his place. And she has recently got married and become a Laduke. And she has retired completely from the industry. So she is no longer going to be our uh, chair, um, nor with Mikazi. So um, she's been great for the committee and the industry. She's provided a lot of input. Um, when I first started on, there's about five of us and there's only two of us left, but you know, she was great with us. We wish her farewell. And um, which then brings with great loss, we need a chair um, to help with Dean as our co-chair for the Plank and Platform Committee. Um, again, working with a committee is a great, great idea for any company who either wants to get more involved or who has a young and upcoming team member that they would like to get involved. Um, I did it six, seven years ago, got involved with Plank and Platform, um, really didn't know anybody um, other than who Gene had introduced me to um, in the beginning, but being part of the committee and learning the different, um, the different types of products and the, the standards and the safeties and inspections um, really allows someone who maybe is shy or not as vocal currently in the uh, membership to kind of give them a chance to get more involved, get introduced to more people. Um, so if anyone currently out here now or virtually has anyone in mind that may want to join a committee or would like to help us with our a new chair, um, please reach out to Dean um, and we can see what all we can do or if if anyone here in the audience has anyone today, come, come see me and, and please help us out with the new chair. Um, so one of the things we want to talk about, which if anyone has any other input on it, um, we just did some brief research of kind of where lumber is currently in our market. Um, right now, I'm sure all of you are feeling it in different materials, but, and I just heard, I think it was yesterday, from when I submitted this at the end of last week, it's now almost 250% price increase from last April on, on lumber prices. Um, a lot of it obviously comes from COVID, um, and <clears throat> but with COVID, construction didn't really shut down, um, especially in my state of Texas, we were consider considered essential and I think we had about a two week vacation and then we kicked right back off. So we really haven't seen a dip in our production um, compared to other states, but there's still a huge demand in, in wood product. Um, and the problem now with it is contractors are paying top dollar, which then passes it 
to the end user. Um, so our current state right now um, with some of the major impacts is people had to stay home and then they had to figure out what the heck am I going to do while at home. So there's a lot of actual DIYers that they decided to build decks or you know, covered pergolas or docks or whatever they could to try to kind of increase their stay at home mandates to provide some type of social interaction. So you see a spike there with, you know, the big box stores. So everyone's going into the Home Depots and the Lowe's and they're buying their own products and they're, they're doing their own wood structures. Um, and then of course with COVID you had lumber mills that were shut down and and then, of course, everywhere else, other than really in the state of Texas, people were building outside structures in order to try to expand their uh, reach to customers just so they can have some type of income with, with the shutdowns of the restaurants. Um, and it's probably going to stay that way so they can have these outside structures help their customers feel safe and, and more open. Um, and then, of course, everywhere else, there's a huge surge in new single home families as people are wanting to get outside of the more compacted areas and get out into the metroplexes. So you're seeing a high demand for single family households, which is also driving the cost of wood. <clears throat> um, some other issues is there's a backlog supply and there's still a robust demand. Uh, plants are still recovering from post pandemic. And you can see here on our, our chart that Yes, we saw a small decline in production because of COVID, but it was very short and then we ramped right back up. And what does that cause? Well, now we're seeing that sawmills inventory is very scarce and they can't catch up. And so they're having a hard time catching up, so, which is causing more increase. Um, you're seeing that more time is being built in the process to, for the increased safety measures now of COVID. So it's slowing the production of the wood um, to all of us because of these new safety protocols. Um, the other part would be is now our freight industry is too busy. First, they didn't have any work because there was no shipping. Well, now they're saying that there's, um, in some industries, they have 24 solid months of backlog. So your freight is going to be increased. The time to get your materials will be slower. Um, so this is going to be a big effect for all industries, not, not just our own. <clears throat> um, so this is just some brief research from, you know, some comments of industry leaders in the lumber. A lot of it has to do with the softwood lumber um, on, the, on the spikes, but you're going to see it more and more. Um, they do think it's going to continue, and now there are rumors going around because of all of the um, high demand and, and not enough product that box stores are price gouging on lumber. Um, you're seeing that companies are beefing up their margins and, to make up for the losses of the mandatory shutdowns. And then they're also trying to create a bubble with their product so they can make an even bigger profit. Um, again, these are, they're rumors, but you're, you are seeing it as you're buying your, your products currently. <clears throat> so how is this gonna impact our industry? Um, real quick is obviously we're gonna have to, to foot the higher cost. Um, we're seeing it in our, our Texas market where we bid scaffold decks months ago. And now we're having to negotiate with our customers and be transparent because what the plywood was gonna cost us then is now tripled in cost. Well, who's gonna cover that? Because my rental rate is not gonna cover these, these triples in cost. So you're gonna see a longer quoting process or a qualifying process as you, as you price things out. Um, and then, of course, the, they may just push the product project because you are seeing higher costs coming from the subcontractors that we did six months ago, and now they're trying to cover themselves. Um, so here's kind of what we see coming up for the remainder of 2021. It, obviously, we're going to continue to see a riser, rising material costs um, because of the shortage of skilled labor and scheduling challenges. Um, the, the lumber pricing could serve more difficult to pass the cost off to the customer and uh, higher borrowing costs brought up by the, by the COVID. With all the new safety standards and all the new procedures that you have to go through, that's a cost. And you're going to see that get passed through to us who then passes through to, to our, our customers. Um, so 
Before I move on, does anyone have any other input that you're seeing in your markets or things that you guys are doing with your customers to try to kind of combat these, these higher costs? Um, for us personally at my company, we're asking, do they need plywood when you do a deck? Can we get away with the steel plank deck? Um, or can we get away with getting creative with runways where they know they're going to need a rolling scaffold because you have a peak or are we going to double tier the scaffold? So we're trying to be as transparent and upfront with our customers. And then we have, we have gotten good feedback at the same time where they understand that the costs are high and how can we offset it to each other to both benefit our customers and who we're providing the access to. So I don't know if anyone's got any other creative ideas or comments on that before I move on. Tom. I was just curious if anybody would consider putting additional verbiage in their quotes to cover that situation where you bid a job and then three months later, the plywood's three times the price right. to go ahead and get it up front that you're going to charge a premium if it happens. <clears throat> I know that we were doing one right now that was bid six months ago, and we've actually been able to get mobilization to try to help cover some of that higher upfront cost before we, you know, actually start shipping the plywood in or our additional planking. So we have tried, we have done that before as well. Um, anybody else? Gene? Hold on. Mike's moving as fast as. <laughs> I don't have the, uh, the the article per se, Tom, but uh, AGC National has put out articles about adding escalation causes into our contract. So I guess that's getting to be something that more people are doing. Is that something we should consider doing? Is having an escalation clause in there? Um, so that's kind of our, our market insight uh, with, you know, the little bit of research that we have. Um, I'm sure you guys are going to be seeing more and more on other, other materials other than just wood, but with wood plank being such a, you know, a key factor to all of us, uh, we thought that would be a positive or not a positive, but information to, to be had. Um, so to kind of get into what the plank and platform committee has been working on, um, I don't want to say that we've exhausted a lot of what we've been working on, but we've done, we've done a lot and it's, it is getting a little bit harder to see what, what all we can work on that's new and fresh. Um, currently we've done guides to plank and platforms and comparison of advantages and disadvantages, how to secure your plank properly, um, the purchasing guidelines <clears throat> for engineered wood and solid sawn as well as for metal and composite. So these are all currently up on the website. Um, we've worked on them a few times over the last few years. Um, so I don't know if anybody knows new items that we should be looking into that are already out there, or if you'd like us to update this. Um, right now, the, we haven't done anything since really the purchasing for the composite and the metal planking. I didn't know if there's anything you guys have out there now that you would like to see us uh, working on. You know what, Matt, on the guidelines and checklists, everything's up to date. We just need to need them to be rebranded. Okay. Okay. We can do that. Um, so one of, we're trying to think outside the box. We're trying to um, have better engagement versus just, you know, Here's some pictures. You can read all the verbiage and the amount of verbiage that goes with it. Um, so we were trying to think of creative ways that we can reach our members that can provide a fair amount, fair amount of information in a, in a short period of time. So one of the projects we were wanting to suggest and see if you guys think it's the right way to go was, is to utilize our SAI YouTube channel. <clears throat> uh, our initial thought was to actually do it in person, use all the different planks and platforms. Um, we could follow our, our guidelines of how to inspect it and we video it or how to properly install it, um, how to store it, stuff like that, that may be beneficial to 
new members coming into the industry and, and getting in with planking um, or just another way of getting a large amount of uh, information to our members in a, in a faster way. Um, so we were actually going to do it all together and in person for everyone that was in Texas because there's three of us, but now we have COVID restrictions. And so we have a new idea, still going to use a video, um, but we were thinking about, because you can do it in cheap ways, very inexpensive. You can use your iPhone. The cameras are so good these days. And then they have different apps where you can create real quick videos. Um, so we were thinking about doing kind of a, a rendered animated video uh, that's short, quick, to the point that provides enough information uh, to our members. <clears throat> so they're easier to create. We don't have to be together. We can do it over the, the phone, through the computer, however you would like to do it. And we can tackle all the plank styles in, in a single video. Um, and a lot of us don't know how to write scripts nor want to talk on camera either. So we thought this would be an easier way to hide our faces as well. Um, so we think it's very easy. It can be clean. It can follow the SAI branding. Um, we won't highlight any specific type of product. So we'll keep it very ge generic. Um, and we can also thank companies that, uh, that are uh, helping us with the input or the help of the video. So we also think with social media being such a big deal and you know the younger group, younger than I am, they want TikTok information. So they need information within 30 to 45 seconds. And so how do we reach that younger audience? We thought maybe this would be a clever idea. Um, so we need your input. But one of the ways we thought we could start doing it and testing it out is you know, possibly using safety inspections, instructional installation and dismantle, um, tie down methods, sh just showing the different products that are out there in the market um, and just coming up with a fun way to not only utilize our YouTube channel, but possibly be able to use the social media platforms as well. So with that, does anybody think this is a bad idea, um, good idea? Or do you think there's other things we should be focusing on as a committee? Well, by uh, July 4th, we're supposed to be done. It's all over with. So maybe we can do it in person. Well, we're in Texas, Dean. It, it's already open. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, over with. So does anybody think this is we should be focusing on the right idea, bad idea? Is there other things that you think is more beneficial to our, our members or? I think it's a great idea. idea. We're just, I do not know the cost of it. Right, we'll have to look into it. Right. Hey, Matt, there was a presentation that we did at Supported, and there's a wind uplift article put out by the SSFI um, for that's on our, the SAIA website. And we took a look at it, and um, it's just kind of dated. And Mike Palladino wanted me to bring it to you guys to say maybe this is a new uh something you could work on to update it too. Not that I think this other, I think this other stuff that you're doing is great too, but the document has some drawings on it and some really old pictures and that, so. Okay. Yeah, I actually retracted that this morning. SSFI will be working on it, but they'll, they oh. are gonna come to you to collaborate. Okay, great. So work with us. My apologies. Okay. No, it's not yours, Wendy, I'm sorry. Just <laughs> we'll give it to Frank. Yeah. <laughs> we currently don't have a layer person on uh, Plank and Plank. No, we do not. Frank would be great to come back on. Yes. <laughs> um, does anybody else have any other ideas or thoughts, questions? Oh, hold on one second, Bill. I'm sorry. They can't hear you remotely. 
what I was saying, Matt, is I think the biggest thing up there, and you guys have capitalized on it, is safety inspections. Um, I know when I ran it, that was the biggest piece of information that not necessarily scaffold companies wanted because they understood the safety standpoint, but it was their customers. Um, and, and in other words, the people, a scaffold company's customer, and how do we evaluate scaffold plank when it comes and goes from a job site before it comes back in sure. your inventory. And we had put together, if you recall, back in early 2000s, uh, basically a PowerPoint. But now with technology and whatnot, um, I, I think the idea of a movie, like you're talking about here, a video of some sort, um, and especially that way you, you'd be able to change it into different languages fairly sure. easily. Oh as well mean, would be a huge plus because that was a big barrier for us at the time. Okay. So <clears throat> we still have to do more research about how we can do it. I just know, um, like I've seen Corinne with Bracco, she's done some fun videos and she's just used her iPhone and then used an app. So I will need some help with those type of people who can handle that, but I think we can get it done in a, in a pretty inexpensive way. And, is this and, something you should also be collaborating with the supported scaffold? Since a I think lot so. of it's going over. I think that would be a great idea. All right. Yeah. Then we can get two videos for one. <laughs> right. Get supported to pay it. Yeah. They have more money than playing just, just for the frames. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, okay, well, that's, that's all I have unless there's any more, more questions. And um, I'm glad that, you know, not everyone is here, but we have plenty of, of uh, people here and it's good to see everybody and, and everyone on virtual. We appreciate you um, attending our, our council session. So.